There's nothing like cultivating your own superfoods. And if you're like me, you gotta have some fresh kale growing in the garden. To be successful, you need to focus on soil preparation, regular fertilization, and observing for some of the common pests. Homegrown food is a valuable resource. Here are my essential tips for growing the best kale. What's up everyone, it's Scott from New Garden Road. You know I'm here to inform, inspire, and elevate you. Encouraging biodiversity and restoring habitat is my mission. One garden at a time. Healthy soil is a key component. Whether you're gardening in ground, in raised beds, or in containers, you want to have a soil depth of about 6 to 8 inches. Good drainage is important for healthy root development. If you've got a heavy clay soil, that can produce some stunted plants. It'd be important to incorporate about 40% compost and then a mineral such as expanded shale or even decomposed granite. That can add some aggregate structure, open up that soil, and increase the drainage. I always recommend replenishing established soils with compost, fertilizer, and some micronutrients. If you're growing in a container, use a fresh, high-quality potting mix such as the Fox Farm brand Ocean Forest. Alright, remember this. You gotta feed those greens so they'll feed you. Regular fertilization throughout the growing season can produce an extended harvest. In Central Texas, we can grow throughout the winter, so I like to plant my kale in October and quite often it's productive for six months or more. Soil preparation with compost and an organic granular fertilizer can help get things off to a great start. But I always recommend reapplying fertilizer every four to six weeks thereafter to encourage healthy top growth. One of my favorites is the Sustain brand 824. That one is higher in nitrogen and it's going to correspond to leafy green growth. You can also apply a liquid fertilizer such as the Fox Farm brand Holy Mackerel. You wanna apply that one every two weeks. Now, it wouldn't be too much to apply both a granular and a liquid fertilizer alongside one another. In these organic fertilizers, they're not real strong in their potency and they're not going to burn plants. As long as you apply them as directed, you're going to be good to go. I really like using both of those in the garden, but whatever you choose, whether it's one or the other or both, just make sure you do it consistently. It's really important to inspect your plants daily for any pest related issues. One of the most common ones is the cabbage looper. You'll find these small moths flying around the garden. You may notice them around your kale or other brassicas. What they're doing is laying eggs. And those tiny little eggs, once they hatch, will emerge as caterpillars. And those are gonna eat up your kale plants real quick. Many times they can be removed by hand. Although they start off really, really small, so sometimes they can be difficult to see, but at that point, you barely have to smash them and they're all done. You could also consider some insect netting. If you cover up your plants from the get-go, you're gonna prevent those moss from getting to the leaves at all, and that should avoid you having to deal with any of those caterpillars. If you don't like either one of those options, there's an organic insecticide called BT. That's short for Bacillus thuringiensis. BT is really effective and it targets caterpillars only. You're not gonna be hurting any beneficial insects and it can be really effective at curbing heavy infestations. Just remember when you're applying BT, it would be effective against any butterfly caterpillars. Those don't host on kale, so you don't really have to worry about it in that instance. But if you've got some butterfly host plants in the nearby vicinity that you really wanna you know, host some butterflies and some caterpillars on, avoid spraying it with the BT. Aphids are another insect that can take hold really quickly. You want to encourage beneficial insect populations such as ladybugs, green lacewings, and some of the hoverflies. All of those will be working in your favor to help eat some of those aphids. They're going to lay some eggs and their larvae are going to hatch and those are going to eat some of the aphids. So it's going to be like an aphid eating party. One of the best ways to encourage biodiversity and attract some of these beneficial insects is by planting a wide array of flowers and herbaceous plants. Some perennial, some annual, all of those will help to draw in a wide array of insects that can help you in the garden. Some of them will be pollinators, some of them will be predatory, just like these ladybugs, the lacewings, and the hoverflies. If more control is needed, consider blasting the aphids off with water. This can be a little bit messy, but it is really effective. Once you blast those aphids off, that's all over. You know, they, they don't really migrate that much. And I think a lot of times when you blast the aphids off, their heads remain stuck in the leaf. So you're probably not gonna taste that, but just bear in mind, the aphids, when you blow them off the plants, they're done. One thing I wanna note here is that I rarely do this because by the time I find these aphid populations, I'm also seeing beneficial insect populations alongside of them. And I think when I spray this water and blast off these aphids, I'm also gonna be blasting off some of the good bugs. 
So I usually hesitate. For me, what I see quite often is that the beneficial insects will bring that population into check. They're gonna balance it out. The aphids won't go away altogether, but they're gonna be diminished, and I'm also gonna be producing beneficial insects in my garden. You know, if I've got something for them to eat, they're gonna reproduce, and that cycle is gonna continue and benefit my vegetable gardening. If you want another option, you can look at insecticidal soap. That's a really low level control that works on contact to stun those aphids. It basically paralyzes them. They'll stop eating and that'll be it for them. Again, I just wanna mention, if you hit one of these beneficial insects with insecticidal soap, there's a chance that you're gonna take that out. So when you take out the good bugs, you have to do their job. Now for me, I always wait until it's a worst case scenario before I employ some of those controls. And typically, like I said, nature comes along and helps me find a balance. But nonetheless, those are some great options for you. You may wanna experiment, see what you learn. And if you don't have a large population of beneficial insects, that can really help you out. Okay. Harlequin bugs are the worst. They showed up really early in my garden this year, right after we had a really long deep freeze here in February. Typically, these are a harbinger of the end of season for kale and many other brassicas. They are very difficult to control. You can physically remove them. Just pick them off and throw them in a bucket of soapy water. I've never had one bite me. They don't bother me. I usually wear some gloves, that's always helpful. It's gonna be an uphill battle once you start seeing these things. They can produce a new generation within a week. That is a really tight timeline to enact some controls. If you've got a day job, they're gonna be in here getting to work while you're at work. So you might as well consider pulling those plants. Listen, I don't like it any more than you do. I've been really upset about it since they came so early this year, but I know that's what I need to do because I see them multiplying rapidly and I've just squished so many at this point that I'm just sick of it. I can't do it anymore. They're starting to mess up my kale. You know, depending on where you are in the country, you may or may not see those. You need to look out for these harlequin bugs. They're bad news, but just understand that nature is also telling you something. It's time to plant some different crops, some warm season crops. It's important to understand the boundaries and the guidelines that nature gives us. And for me, in my central Texas garden, when I see harlequin bugs, I know it's time to move on. Kicking it with the aphids. That's what I'm talking about. No, it's not. I don't like aphids, but they in my garden. Now that you know these essential tips for growing the best kale, check out more awesome gardening videos on my channel, like this one for how to fertilize vegetables, flowers, and herbs. Like this video if you like it, and subscribe to New Garden Road for weekly content. You can grow your own food. Keep it organic.